From Hollywood, Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle presents the Mel Blanc Show. Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show with Mary Jane Croft, Earl Ross, B. Benadera, Joe Kearns, Leora Thatcher, Zucky, and Victor Miller and his orchestra. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard Mel Blanc as the happy postman. Hello, Missy Burns. Here's your mail. Well, goodbye, Miss E. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. You've heard him as the famous train caller. Train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. You've heard him as the lovable character, Zuki. Well, in, in the fix-it shop, I'm the president of the... President of the... I'm, I'm the vice president of the... I'm the vice president of the... I'm the treasurer of the... Tra- of the <laughs> I sweep out the place. <laughs> You've heard him as the famous Warner Brothers cartoon character, Bugs Bunny. Mm. What's up, Doc? <laughs> now hear him as the star in his own show. Hello, Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. You bend it, we mend it. <laughs> now let's drop in at Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop, where you're pretty sure to find things in an awful fix. Well, it seems that Mel's fiancée, Betty, has been dropping none too subtle hints about the need for efficiency in the fix-it shop. I wouldn't say that Uncle Rupert and Zuki are exactly moochers, but, well, they're more than just a little worried. Zuki, we have to show that we're efficient around here or else. So you'd better try working faster. Oh, I'm, 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 uh, quick, all right. See, I, I, I'm like a bolt of lightning. I'm, I'm a regular dynamo. dynamo I think I blew a fuse. Zookie, here comes Mel. Quick, get busy. Hey, okay. Hello, Mel. What kept you so long? Oh, that Adams job was bigger than I expected. Her toaster wasn't the only thing Mrs. Adams broke. She broke her lawnmower and she broke her electric iron. I hope you presented the lady with a substantial bill. I couldn't. Mrs. Adams was broke, too. <laughs> oh, I see. Hey, Uncle Rupert, Betty's right. As a businessman, I'm a washout. We need a little efficiency around here. Just look at this place. It's a shambles. Oh, I don't know. It just has a sort of a lived-in feeling. <laughs> yeah, lived-in. I'm serious. Just look at that cigar butt on the floor. Is that yours, Uncle? No, my lad. You saw it first. <laughs> oh, stop kidding. My, you are in a sour mood, nephew. Look, why don't you get yourself a ticket for the girly review at the Gaiety tomorrow night? It'll cheer you up. Now, Uncle, have you seen the pictures of Fifi Divine the star? Why, that gorgeous little lady has everything. And she carries it so well. <laughs> Uncle Rupert, you know I wouldn't waste a breath on any other girl but Betty. Why, Betty's the most wonderful girl... And... Hello there, sugar boy. I'm Fifi Divine. Oh, boy. I thought you weren't going to waste a breath. On her, it wasn't wasted. Gosh, I feel better already. You've got a sign outside that says you can fix anything under the sun. I specialize in little jobs under the moon. <laughs> Look, Pop, get back to your funny papers. I'll talk to your straight man here. Uh, well, what can I do for you, miss? Well, I'm the star of the Pinup Girl Review opening at the Gaiety Theater tomorrow night. Uh, you've been at the Gaiety, haven't you, sugar boy? Oh, sure. I go there practically every night. Why, Melvin? Well, it's the only place in town you can get Hershey bars. <laughs> oh, you're cute. Look, sugar boy, you see this little gadget? I want you to fix it for me. Sure. It's just a little zipper. Oh, it's not just a little zipper. There's only one like it. It was made especially for me and my harem dance. Harem dance? Mm-hmm. That's the one Anna didn't do for the King of Siam. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Did he have a weak heart? <laughs> you see, in my dance, the miracle zipper drops off one veil when I go like this. Another one when I go like this. And another one when I go like this. Look, Uncle, no hands. <laughs> well, make sure you have my miracle zipper ready by tomorrow. Goodbye, sugar boy. Well, uh, Mr. Vine, it just happens I'm going your way. Which way are you going? <laughs> Gee. Hello, sugar boy. Hello. Oh, oh, oh uh, hello, Betty. Well, well, you see, there was something wrong with her zipper, so naturally, she thought of me. Huh. Uh, I didn't see you come in. Obviously. Oh, that, that was Fifi Divine, the glamorous dancer at the gaiety. Glamorous? Huh. I can't say she wears clothes very well. 
Wearing clothes isn't her specialty. <laughs> Never mind. I have something more important to talk to you about, Mel. I know, Betty. Efficiency. Yes. I finally found a man who will tell you how to run your business, what to buy, what to sell, and how much to charge. Gee, he must be from Washington. Well, he's an efficiency expert. Just came to town. Herbert Goodhue. Now, are you or are you not going to let me get a hold of him for you? Well, okay, honey. Uh, when will you get in touch with him? The day before yesterday. Oh, the day before... Huh? <laughs> yes, I wanted to make sure you wouldn't change your mind. Mr. Blank, I'm Herbert Goodhue, the efficiency expert. How do you feel? Well, I had a little cold... Who cares? <laughs> huh? That's your first lesson in efficiency, Blank. I've just known you a few minutes. How could I possibly care how you feel? But you ask me. Always get to the point. That's the good use, speedy deedy way. <laughs> speedy deedy. Now, listen, Mr. Blank. I'll give you an example of what real efficiency can do for people. For instance, when Mrs. Goodhue and I converse, we use my famous peachy speechy system. Peachy speechy? Not a word wasted. For instance, if I want to compliment Mrs. Goodhue on a delicious dinner, I do not say, darling, the flounder was so delicious it simply melted in my mouth. You don't, huh? No, indeedy. That wouldn't be speedy, deedy. I leave out all the unimportant words and say, darling, flounder, mouth. <laughs> well, I guess you can't get away with that as long as you say darling. <clears throat> What's that you're fooling with? Oh, I have to see about Miss Fifi's zipper. Uh, <clears throat> well, what you do outside of business hours is no concern of the Good Hue Efficiency Program. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Goodhue, I don't think you understand. I see I'll have to change your whole business approach. First of all, how do you say no to your customers? Oh, I just open my mouth and it rolls out. Oh, when you say no, you've got to make people realize you mean it. Oh? I have proof that dogs and guinea pigs, that when you shake your finger in their faces and say no, spelling it out N-O, they react fastest. Well, what about the dogs and guinea pigs that can't spell? <laughs> Number two. Another feature of my speedy deedy plan. Yeah? Look at this mad jumble here in your shop. When I'm through, every time you turn around, you'll fall over just what you're looking for. It never fails. Do you sell accident insurance, too? <laughs> and number three, that's the hearty to party way of saying goodbye. Gosh, I better write all these things down. It's a goodbye with just a touch of hello in it, like this. Goodbye! <laughs> Gosh, that may sound like you're glad to see them go. Oh, you're a lucky man, Mr. Blank. When I'm through in your fix-it shop today, you'll be master of speedy dee dee peachy speechy and hearty departed. Okie dokie. I mean, okay. <laughs> I'll do it for Betty. Ah, oh, that's the old speedy dee dee. I'll do it even if it drives me slappy happy. <laughs> You want me to fix this vase, Mrs. Otis? Yes, if you please, Melvin. Oh, you should see my little grandchild. Poor little fellow, he's teething. My daughter just has to keep burping him all the time. Who cares? And... Huh? What, what was that? Speedy Dee Dee, Speedy Dee Dee. Mel Blank, you're much too old for baby talk. About your vase, the answer is no. No. N-O. No. I... I don't understand you. Honey, dogs and guinea pigs understand. Take your finger off of my face. I think you've gone mad. Give me back my face. Okay, where is it? Oh. Oh, my boss. My precious Chinese boss. <laughs> you see, another feature of the speedy deedy plan. Oh. You can't turn around without falling over just what you're looking for. It never fails. I'm getting out of here, but you're going to pay for that boss. I almost forgot. Hardy the party. Goodbye. <laughs> Gosh, Uncle Rupert. Mr. Goodhue's efficiency plan is ruining me. I lost three good customers already today. Four. Don't forget Mrs. Longnecker. My beloved Clara, the richest woman in town. Did she walk out too? Not before she slapped my face. 
But why? I decided to try Mr. Goodhue's peachy speechy system to propose marriage. You know, leave out all the unimportant words. Well? Why was I eloquent. I suggested I come and live with her in her mansion, spend all our days together, perhaps have a few little ones. Well, those are certainly honorable intentions. I meant them to be. But one of the unimportant little words I left out of my proposal was marriage. <laughs> What's going to happen next? Well, I fixed Miss Fifi's zipper, but I can't find it anywhere. What? All this darn efficiency stuff. Oh, I'll ruin her career. She'll drag me into court. She'll sue me for every dollar I've got. I just hope Mr. Goodhue is satisfied. Now, now, Melvin. He and his speedy deedy, peachy speechy, hearty to party. He just left out the most important thing, that's all. What's that, nephew? Harry Carey. <laughs> Often it happens. You meet a man, and you think, he's a nice fellow, but... But what? Well, you hate to say it, but it's that little breath of trouble. I mean, unpleasing breath. And the chances are, this chap doesn't dream that a breath of trouble is tagging him, making him unpopular, hindering him in business, spoiling his fun. Without suspecting it, you may be the victim of unpleasing breath. So be on your guard against it. Just do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name Colgate Tooth Powder with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Well, let's drop back again at Mel Blank's Fix-It Shop, where the new efficiency plan of Speedy Deedy, Peachy Speechy, and Hearty to Party has the morale very low in Deedy Weedy. Sookie, if Peachy sues Mel and he loses the shop, we'll be out on the street. Frankly, I'm worried. Oh, yes, yes, yes so am I. I'm uh, b- beside myself with it. If, 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 I, I'm beside myself with... Wor- 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 I'm, I'm beside myself with... Hey, it's getting crowded in here. <laughs> There's only one chance. Mel is out somewhere trying to find something like that zipper right now. Gosh, I, I sure hope he finds it. Good Lord, here comes Fifi now. You talk to her, Zuki. Uh, me, me? But don't tell her Mel lost that zipper. Don't let her pry it out of you. I'm leaving for the back door. Well, don't worry. I'll I'll take care of her. I know what to tell her. I know just what I'm going to say. Hello, sugar boy. I'll say... (laughs) (laughs) My. My, you're cute. Who are you? (laughs) I'm Zuki. I, I work for Mel. Where is your boss? I came to pick up my zipper. Oh, well, uh, Mel just stepped out for a me, me, uh, for a me, me, me. He, he'll be back in a couple of hours. Uh, 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 he'll be back in a few days. I think he got lost. Well, we don't need him, Zuki. Fifi just wants her zipper. Now tell, tell me where Mel left it. Come on, sugar boy. No. <laughs> oh, you can tell me anything. We're here all alone, aren't we? Uh, gee, just you and me. Mm-hmm. That's it, Emily. Nice and cozy. <laughs> yeah, but, but I can always call for help. <laughs> We're all alone. And after all, you're a man and I'm a woman. Well, let's leave it that way, huh? <laughs> oh, I'm tired of this. You tell that pinheaded boss of yours, if I don't have that zipper for my show tonight, I'll sue him for every dollar he's got. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. Don't you butt me. Do you know what that zipper's supposed to do for me tonight? 
Oh, 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 sure. <laughs> uh, 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 keep your shirt on. <laughs> Darling, I'm so sorry. This whole efficiency business is my fault. But I was just thinking of you. Oh, it's not you, Betty. It's just that I'm not good enough for you. Mel, don't you dare talk like that. Well, I know a couple of people who can't see why you want to marry me. Your mother and your father. Oh, darling. Your grandmother. <laughs> Uncle Emmett. Cousin Oliver. Darling. And then there's a couple of others. Mr. Thayer, the banker. Mr. Cooney, the traffic cop. Mr. Albernathy, the taxidermist. Oh, stop. My old scoutmaster. My landlady. The 4-H club. The American Legion. The Shriners. The UNO. <laughs> oh, darling, you're such a fool. But I do love you. And I love you too, Betty. I'll get out of this somehow. I'll just keep a stiff lower lip. <laughs> Mel, the expression is upper lip. Well, can I help it if it's my lower lip that's trembling? <laughs> You'll be here any minute, Uncle Rupert. I don't know what else I can do. I just can't find her zipper. Well, nephew, don't worry. If worst comes to worst, I'll go out and get a job. Gosh. I'd hate to see you spoil your record. <laughs> oh, my gosh, here comes Dr. Crabb, the veterinarian. He would come at a time like this. Never mind, my lad. I'll take care of that canine kill there. Oh, thanks, Uncle. I'll go and take one last desperate look around. Well, hello, Christopher. How's the dog doctor this morning? Consulting veterinarian, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter with me. <laughs> Got a catch in my throat. Uh, could I have a pan of water, please? <laughs> Christopher, do you realize you're even getting to sound like a dog? Why, thank you, Rupert. A dog is man's best friend. <laughs> In fact, I understand them. You understand what dogs say? Why, certainly. I have a little Pekingese. When he looks up at me with his big watery eyes and says, uh, You know what that means? He's hungry. Oh, somebody must have told you. <laughs> but dogs are wonderful. <laughs> When my little cocker spaniel goes over to meet my great Dane, he says, rawr, rawr, rawr. And then the great Dane says, rawr, rawr, rawr. And then that little cocker. Big <laughs> Dane <and> says, <laughs> And what does that mean? I don't know, but they sure understand each other. <laughs> Oh, please go away. Yeah, I must be going now. But remember, elephants need your sympathy, especially adults. They blow their nose and wait so long until they get results. <laughs> well, bye. <laughs> I know, Miss Devine. I but... should be over at the theater right now, but I can't go on. What am I going to dance in, my girdle? Mmm, that ought to be snappy. <laughs> hey, that's what I'll do. I got it. I got it. Now, what are you doing? No, don't push all those things off the counter. Have you gone crazy, man? Now, you stay out of this, Mr. Good, you. Uncle Rupert, throw those nuts and bolts where they belong. Yeah, that's right. Right there in the sink. And all this goes back where it was, too. <laughs> Just...
Bill, what have you done? Goodness, the fix-it shop's a shambles. Everything just the way it was yesterday morning. The same mess. The same mess? Are you sure, Mr. Goodhue? Exactly I should know. the same? I should know. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. Darling, where are you going? To get Miss Fifi's zipper. Now that everything's in order again, I know just where it is. Here, you see? It was inside Mrs. Zabrowski's zither. You know, Z for zither and Z for zipper. Oh, let me have that zipper. I've got to run to the theater. A- and to show you there's no hard feelings, I'll bring my car around for you to fix. Well, what's wrong with your car? Uh, you know me, sugar boy. I strip the gears. <laughs> so long. Something else I can do for you, Mr. Blank. Mr. Goodhue, the answer is no. No? N-O. That spells no. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Goodhue. You know, hearty to party. Goodbye! <laughs> For a Zookieism. What? You never heard of a Zookieism? Well, hang around. Use Colgate tooth powder, keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it each night. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate tooth powder. Look, let's face the facts. A little breath of trouble, I mean unpleasing breath, is no respecter of persons. Girl or woman, man or boy, teamster or tycoon, debutante or duchess. All are possible victims of unpleasing breath. Why, even you, though you don't suspect it, may risk your happiness, ruin your romance, even jeopardize your job because of unpleasing breath. So isn't it best to be on your guard, to watch out for that little breath of trouble? My advice is do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date, with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing. Remember the name Colgate Tooth Powder with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Well, Zuki, we've had a lot of excitement, but I hope you learned something about efficiency. Yes, Zuki, to be efficient, you should score yourself on things like ingenuity, perseverance, industry. How would you score yourself? Uh, well, on ingenuity, I, I, I score for five, uh, yeah. Uh, on perseverance, I score it. Uh, 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 on industry, I score it. Uh, 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 <laughs> I don't know what the score is. This is Scott Easton reminding you that Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath of sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show every Tuesday at the same time. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday night for more fun with Mel and the people you'll meet in Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. Say hello to Halo Shampoo for naturally bright and beautiful hair. Remember, even finest soaps and soap shampoos hide the natural luster of your hair with dulling soap film. But Halo Shampoo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather, quickly banishes loose dandruff and dirt. Halo needs no lemon or vinegar rinse. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Get Halo Shampoo at any cosmetic counter. Mel Blanc Show was written by David Victor and Herb Little Jr. and was produced and directed by Joe Ryan. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.